Hi everyone, and thank you for joining us for our first lesson. My name is Britt, and this week we're going to be focusing on plankton. To start us off, what is plankton? When you hear the word plankton, what kinds of things do you think of? Go ahead and pause this video for a moment so you have time to write some things down or share your thoughts with someone sitting next to you. When you're ready, go ahead and hit play again. When people think of plankton, they often think of tiny things that they would need a microscope to be able to see. But what if I told you that this is a plankton and this is a plankton? How do we define it? Plankton comes from the Greek word planktos, which means drifting. So plankton are drifters. They cannot swim against the ocean's currents. They just have to go wherever the ocean pushes them. It's really more of a lifestyle than a classification, because all kinds of creatures are plankton. Plankton are living things. When scientists organize plankton, we put them into one of two groups, based on how they get their energy. They are either considered phytoplankton or zooplankton. How do you think these two groups might get their energy? Take another pause break to write and discuss. The two main ways that living things get their energy is by either making their own or consuming it. Phytoplankton use sunlight to make their own energy, similar to plants. They aren't truly plants, but they are plant-like. To remember this, just think phyto equals photosynthesis. Zooplankton, on the other hand, have to consume their food, just like animals. Some zooplankton are animals, and some are not. So for our purposes, we'll just say that they are animal-like. You can remember this by thinking that animals can be found in zoos. Let's look at some examples of these plankton. Serratium is a very common type of phytoplankton. We see these often in our plankton samples at Simi, and we also see them on our night snorkels because they bioluminesce. These little plankton are able to produce their own light. When we disturb them with our swimming, they light up as blue sparks. This is a very common type of zooplankton called a copepod. Does this look familiar to anybody? Copepods are one of the most abundant organisms in the ocean. They were even the inspiration for a cartoon character, Sheldon Plankton of SpongeBob. Sheldon has long antennae and a single red eye, just like the copepods he is based on. Copepods, however, are not evil. We'll talk more about their role in marine ecosystems later. Let's get back to defining our plankton. In addition to being plant-like or animal-like, plankton are also either holoplankton or meroplankton. Holoplankton will be plankton for their entire life cycle. They will always be drifters. They will be plankton for their whole lives. This applies to all phytoplankton, as well as many zooplankton, like copepods and even jellies. Our final group of plankton is called meroplankton. They are plankton for only a part of their life cycle. They start out as drifters, but eventually they grow strong enough that they can swim against the ocean's currents. So they're plankton today, but not to marrow. Can you think of an animal that might start its life as a drifting plankton? Take a moment to write and discuss. All kinds of marine invertebrates, like barnacles, brittle stars, and snails, all start off as plankton. Many fish start off as plankton as well. Most fish start off their lives in eggs drifting around in the ocean. And even after they hatch, the tiny larvae are still considered plankton until they grow into stronger swimmers. Now that we've learned about all the types of plankton, let's take a look at a live plankton sample. As you observe the plankton, guess which categories the individual plankton belong to. Is it a zooplankton or a phytoplankton? A holoplankton or a meroplankton? Notice how the plankton are shaped and what kinds of adaptations they have. How are they moving? Do you see anything that you recognize from our lesson? 
I'll leave this sample up here for a bit so you can write down and discuss some observations. You probably saw some pretty weird stuff in that plankton sample. And while plankton can look very bizarre, the way that they're shaped is essential to their survival. Plankton may be at the mercy of the ocean's currents, but they still want to have as much control as possible over where exactly they sit in the water, especially when it comes to how close to the surface they are. Phytoplankton photosynthesize, so they need to be close enough to the surface to be able to get sunlight. But if they're too close, they'll be damaged by the sun's powerful rays. Zooplankton feed on phytoplankton and other zooplankton, so they want to be nearby. Plankton want to prevent themselves from sinking too quickly, and they want to be able to move toward prey or away from predators. They have different adaptations to help with this. Let's take a look at some examples from our earlier sample. How do you think having all of these extra appendages might be helpful? What allows this plankton to move through the sample? Flattened body shapes and extra appendages increase a plankton's surface area, allowing it to sink more slowly in the ocean. Appendages for swimming may also give them just enough of a boost to avoid predators. Plankton are interesting enough, but why do they matter? Why do you think plankton are important? Take a few moments to write and discuss. As we said earlier, phytoplankton use sunlight to make their own energy through photosynthesis. As they do this, they give off oxygen as a byproduct. Scientists estimate that as much as 80% of Earth's oxygen is produced by phytoplankton. In addition to giving us the oxygen we breathe, plankton are a vital part of the food web. Zooplankton eat phytoplankton and other zooplankton, and those zooplankton are food for many fish and invertebrates, which are then food for larger fish and invertebrates, which are then food for us. If we lose plankton, the whole thing falls apart. We don't always give them much thought, but plankton keep us going. Thanks, plankton. Thanks for joining me at CME to learn all about plankton. Keep an eye on our blog and our social media pages for more ocean content.